Hi everyone, today we are going to make a sci-fi console using Fluent, which is an add-on for Blender. So we're going to start with the base. To do so, press F and select Create. Show the grid by right-clicking. You can now draw from the center and hold Shift while moving your mouse. Once you're happy with the shape, left click to validate and right click to complete the base. Let's make this more interesting by using the cut tool on the side. For this part, we're going to use the shape tool. You can make it by pressing S. Adjust the resolution of the grid so we can have more precision. Start drawing by clicking on the dots and once you're done, you can right click. Press V on your keyboard to go through the mesh. We can mirror it to the bottom by holding left click and choose mirror. Click on the bottom dot to mirror it to the bottom. You can go to edit mode if you want to adjust it later, uh, of course. Great, now we need details. Use the inset tool with the rectangle mode and row from the center while holding shift. Make sure the rectangle is taller than the base and don't forget to press V so the inset goes through the mesh. Hold left click and choose Array. You can adjust by moving the mouse left and right. You might have some artifacts. To fix them, adjust the thickness. If you still have some issues, we are going to fix them right now. With the main object selected, go to edit mode and add an edge loop in the middle. It can happen that it's not in the right place as you can see, so we have to move the edge. After that, Make sure the edge is still selected and go back to object mode. Open the Fluent menu by pressing F and use the VG Cleaner tool. We are done with the base, now let's take care of the top part. To make the screen of the console, we are using the Slice tool. We can draw from the center and Adjust the position by pressing G, then Y, Y to move it on the Y axis. We add a bevel so we have rounded corners. To prevent any artifact in the future, we add an edge in the middle. Here we have a special case. Um, we added an edge but it doesn't show on the face and whenever you got this problem you need to ask yourself which object is creating this face and in this case it's the cut that we did in the beginning. Show the boolean by pressing F and click show hide booleans or press greater than, lower than on your keyboard. Select the boolean that is cutting the shape and go to edit mode. To help you see better, you need to activate the edit mode on the solidifier modifier of this boolean. Press K to use the knife tool and enter to complete the cut of the knife. 
Now it's better, the line is in the middle. This bevel is a little bit too much. I will lower it a bit and we can do the same also for the screen. To make some sort of a border, slice the screen, click on the dot that is in the center of the bevel so we have the same proportion and add the first bevel to make it the same angle as the border. Okay, now we are making the keyboard using the slice tool once again. Don't worry if you get things like this, we will fix it the same way we did for the screen. Once again, show the boolean, go to edit mode, use the knife tool and place some vertex. To make some keys, it's very simple. I draw a square in the middle by holding shift and control at the same time while moving your mouth. Use the array tool on the side and press C once you got the spacing you want. It will adjust the number of elements. If you ever want to adjust the spacing again, you can press C and still move your mouse left and right to adjust the spacing. Once you're done, left click to validate the array. Like always, don't bother with artifacts. You already know how to fix it. So I'm gonna speed up this part. Add some edges and move the vertex to make the line cross every row of the keys. Uh, you can move the vertex along the edge by pressing G two times. I think we are done with the keyboard. Uh, actually, I want to move it a little bit up. So select the keys, select the keyboard and move it. Of course, you, you will need to adjust the vertex of the boolean object uh, to intersect the key again. I will add another detail at the bottom. Um, this is some kind of a card reader. Uh, so you can use the slice tool, make a rectangle and uh, cut it in the middle so we can place some kind of card or piece of paper. Okay, now that we are done with the top part, uh, we're going to use the slice uh, to make some kind of a door uh, to open in the front for maintenance, for example. Um, to make a door handle, uh, we just make a cut in the door and select the boolean that we use for the cut. Uh, we can isolate the mesh, so the cut itself, the boolean, by pressing slash on the numpad. Uh, this will isolate the boolean and we can cut it on the top. So don't cut it too deep because we are cutting uh, the cuts that we made for the handle and we are going to cut just a part of it so it creates some handle that we can uh, open the door with. Uh, this technique of cutting the cutter is actually a uh, pretty useful in art surface modeling because you can make complex shapes. 
as you can see the cut is a little bit too close to the border uh, so to adjust it you need to move the cut that we just made if you want to add more details to the door uh, you can make screws pretty easily using the slice tool uh, in the circle mode so you need to press C on your keyboard to go to circle mode to go further in the details um, you can cut the rect a rectangle in the middle of the screws um, it's sometimes causing problem like this uh, this is because the bevel of the object of the screw is actually too high. Uh, so uh, you need to complete the cut and adjust the bevel in the Fluent menu. For the sides of the console, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a pretty cool shape uh, with the cut tool. Adjust the grid uh, to make it uh, like a good resolution, um, something like that. So we have more to work on. Use the shape tool by pressing S and start drawing from the top. Once you reach the bottom, uh, don't right click, just press space bar and this will make a line on the shape that you just did. Uh, we can of course change the thickness and the bevel uh, to adjust it. We mirror it to the other side and we check if the shape is okay. Okay, we are done with this shape. Um, I would like to make a grid on the side uh, so I will slice a rectangle and then cut the slice like we did with the door handle uh, show the boolean and cut the boolean used to cut the slice with the array make multiple shapes go to edit mode select all and rotate around 30 degrees on the x-axis um, it might make your array look a little bit weird like this um, but you can go back into the array tool and add change the spacing again so you can fix this once you're done with the grid you can change it if it doesn't look good by selecting the boolean object and moving it up or down uh, to fix the artifacts and uh, make it uh, like you want for the other side I will make a rectangle shape add a bevel and use the radial array tool uh, once you are in the radial array uh, if you want to change the angle of the rectangles uh, you can press B or V to rotate the shapes mirror it and make sure it looks good on the other side Uh, this model looks a little bit too simple, so we need to add some shapes here and there. Uh, to do this, the cut tool is the perfect one. I will let you play around and create some cuts everywhere on the mesh. So here is cool trick. Uh, you can show the grid by right clicking and you might see some white dots along uh, the edges. So if you want to cut along one edge, 
you need to put your mouse on one white dot, press X, and then put your mouse on another dot on this edge and press X again. And what it will do is it will move the grid along this edge. So you can also uh, rotate the grid along the X. So the axis will be the edge and you can rotate it like this to make special cuts like this one, for example. For the last part, I will add antennas on the top using the circle tool and the array. You can also add a cylinder on the tip of each antennas. Once you're done with one cylinder, uh, you need to auto-complete the object uh, with the Fluent menu and choose auto-complete. Then you can duplicate the shape using Shift plus D and pull it to the other antenna. Thanks for watching and don't forget to practice on your own and see you on the next one.